The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. The Frankie DeBusk Show is presented by your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie to Bus, the 2015 edition as the Tusculum Pioneers also welcome in the new era at quarterback as well. Us wide receivers and some defensive linemen and linebackers, it's always fun to talk this time of the year. Everybody's zero and zero and there's so much hope and there's so much promise. That's also true for our, the opposition for the Tusculum Pioneers to open up the season September 5th, 2015. It's interesting that these two teams started the reincarnation of Pioneer football back in 1991. And for a team called, or a school called Clinch Valley, they started the birth of their football program also in 1991 against each other. It was also a game that Clinch Valley won by a final score of 13 to 8. Now, in the eight previous series, they have had, or the nine previous, they have had the better between the Tusculum, for the Tusculum Pioneers. They lead the series five games to three. But the last meeting was 1998. It was at J.J. Henry High School. It was freezing cold. Couldn't feel my toes. Didn't know exactly what I was saying. It was one of the very first few years that I was broadcasting. 1998 was a long time ago, but it was a win for the Pioneers that were just beginning to turn the corner in Coach DeBus' first year. 99 was a struggle. 2000 began air raid. And here we are with Mark Golb's, Kolb's spread offensive attack that has looked very good. Funny that in 1991, two teams were polar opposites of each other with what they did offensively. Now, they're very much the same. Spread offense attack for Virginia Wise and for the Pioneers. A Tusculum team that's coming off last year, winners of five of their last six to end the season at six and five, good enough to finish third in the South Atlantic Conference. For UVA Wise, they finished the year on a high note with the win, basically a last second kick 17-14 against Fairmont State, but it was only their third win of the year, and this will be their very first year as a full-fledged Division II member. Welcome to Division II football, UVA Wise. A perfect evening for football and a spectacular place to watch a football game as well, and also a pretty nice facility. They were excited, had a good crowd. We'll talk about that, plus so much more. It was the season opener for the Pioneers, the home opener for the Cavaliers. Coach DeBusk will join us when we come back next as you watch the Frankie DeBusk Show. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Showtime. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus TV show, the Tusculum Pioneers and the UVA Wise Cavaliers. It is the ninth meeting between these schools. UVA Wise had a five and three advantage. Not the first meeting since 1998 as we welcome in Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus. We, we've talked a little bit about just everything that has surrounded the Pioneer football program leading up to this and our kickoff show and how there's all these distractions with the passing of your father and how it probably for you, I maybe I'm maybe even put words in your mouth, just getting back onto the football field and just kind of standing there. Maybe you relish that moment until you fell down 21 to nothing. Well, yeah. Good point, Brian. It was, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on. It was good to get back out there and sort of get back into some what you call of a routine. And uh, I looked around on the sideline and noticed that uh, several of the coaches, several of the managers, you know, we got the big coach sticker on our helmets, but they actually had them on their hats. And 
all different kind of places. So it was obviously bringing back some some memories there. But it was good to to kick off the football season, and uh, it wasn't good to be down 21 to nothing. That wasn't the plan. I don't know if uh, if Dad upstairs decided to put a little pressure on us and how we responded, but very proud of how we responded. I talked to our team about. Those things might happen to us in game one, and we found a way to hang on and, and, and take the lead. Well, let's take, go ahead and take a look at some of these first-half highlights as Tusculum battles UVA Wise. And it has been since 1998 that I have been there, obviously you, you as well, and the new football facility thought it was just, you know, spectacular, a little bit of rain to start. But you know, I'm sure that these kids, this team, had no idea. Uh, we, last year we talked about a veteran team out there. This year we're not talking about those veterans on offense, and it's probably scary as you guys are getting ready to take the field for the first time. Yeah, it was. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about their facilities. I was really impressed. Uh, Coach Lusk's done a really good job up there, and their facilities is a whole, uh, <clears throat> a whole lot different than playing at JJ Kelly when we went up there in 1998, and uh, was impressed with uh, with the surroundings and. They've done a really nice job up there getting their uh, their program off and running in the Division II route. And, uh, you know, I thought we were ready to play as a football team. I thought our kids were very focused and excited, and uh, they had a good crowd. They had a good environment. Uh, it did rain a little bit on us there early on, and, and there were supposed to just be spotty showers here and there. But when the rain finally got out of there, it ended up being a beautiful night, and uh, we found a way to, to get a win. All right, it's a Pioneer football team that's kicking off the season. UVA Wise, Coach DeBusk has a very good record in season openers, 13-4 and four during the DeBusk era, and for this Pioneer football team, 30, 32, and 3. It was the celebration, the 25th year for UVA Wise and Tusculum as UVA Wise kicked off their season back in 1991. And they got underway celebrating in a big way. Jeremy Eubank, good quarterback to Massenburg for 40 yards, and then they would pound it in and take a quick 7-0 lead. Yeah, we just uh, we turned one loose there. We got to do a better job of covering our guy when we're supposed to cover him. And they made a big play. I said going in the ball game, field position was going to be key as well as eliminating the big play. And they hit us on a big play there and got 50. We took the field offensively. And Luke Lancaster getting his first start at quarterback. A little shaky. We thought he may be getting in, getting the, the, the season rolling, but uh, he finally settled down and ended up having a great ball game. And completion on the first. Second one going for uh, no yards just because it was also incomplete. Um, trying to uh, hit Evan Altizer as well, and this one will be incomplete. So, you know, I asked him afterwards, I said, you know, evaluate, you know, your start. And he goes, I don't know if I was nervous or I just wasn't very good. I just don't think I was very good. Um, but UVA wise to get off to a start, hold the three and out, force a punt. Cantrell gets the punt away. And then uh, Jeremy Eubank, after a four-yard run by Griffith, with go deep. And I thought good defensive coverage here just didn't make a play. Uh, we got to make this play. This is double coverage. We should have had an interception. Instead, we one of our guys falls down. The other gets turned around, and uh, we give him a touchdown. And here it is. They are executing, and we are not. Uh, we were in position. And tell our players all the time, us as coaches will get you in position, but you got to be the one to make the play. And that was one of those cases there. And a couple of veterans actually fell down. And we just got to get relaxed and play football. And is there a better way to relax than to throw it to Justin Houston? Uh, he's had an unbelievable camp, and you can see how athletic he is there. And Luke hits Justin. Justin's a senior from down in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. He played at Bradley Central High School. And we finally get a little comfortable here and start doing some good things. And unfortunately, we put the ball on the ground. That's DJ Samuels, a sophomore from over in the middle Tennessee area. we got to hang on the football there. And uh, we talked about those things happening, and unfortunately they did. And we got to shake it off and keep playing. All right, he fumbles, and UVA Wise would drive down the field, miss a field goal from 41 yards. It would have been good from 61 yards, but it was pushed just right. Didn't really get Tusculum going, but I think it gave the confidence for the defense knowing that they had missed. So first and 10, Luke Lancaster would hit Justin Houston here in the first quarter with the Pioneers trailing 14 to nothing, and then they would go into the – Second quarter, Luke Lancaster uh, handing it off. And I thought the running backs did a very nice job running it in between the tackles. I thought we did a good job up front offensively. Uh, I think, again, that's one of the strengths of our football team. we got some veterans up there. And I thought the, these young running backs getting their first opportunity to play college football uh, handled themselves very well. And did, they did hit it north and south and A gaps and the B gaps. And something we've talked a lot about, pressing the A gap, making some things happen with the ball in our hands. And, you know, to be down 14 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, I hadn't thought we've played that bad. We gave up two big plays uh, from, a, from a defense standpoint, and we turned the ball over on offense. And uh, Again, I, I kept thinking we were okay. I just wasn't sure when okay was going to take, take place. All right, so Luke Lancaster in the offense out onto the field, again trailing by a score of 14 to nothing. This will be the uh, first play of the second quarter. And from my, my, my view, I thought this was a touchdown, but I didn't realize it was just underthrown. 
Well, I told Luke after the ball game, you know, I really, Luke, I thought you played phenomenal if we eliminate about three or four uh, plays, three or four balls, and that was one of them. Kenny's actually got the guy beat if he'll just throw it out there and let him run under it. But he held a little long, underthrew the guy, and they made a good play. And uh, now we've turned it over twice. We've given up two big plays, and we're, just, we're down 14 to nothing. They would not score on that drive. They would be forced to punt it away, but the Pioneers would not move the ball either. And then UVA Wise would get it back. Thought this was a great catch, good coverage. Calvin Mitchie, eight yards for UVA Wise. And the score is 21 to nothing after a 13 play, 79 yard drive. They have some good receivers. That was a great catch right there. A good throw by their quarterback and a great catch. And, Cam was in pretty good position. They just made a play when we didn't. And finally, we're moving the chains. And that's, again, we hit Justin Houston there. And, you know, we didn't give up a sack all day. That, that goes to show the, the play calling to Mark Cole. I thought he did a good job getting the ball out of uh, Luke's hands. And here Kenny shakes a few guys and takes off running. And we actually all said he's in the end zone. Nobody's going to catch him. And unfortunately, they, they ran him down right there on the one. But great job by Kenny making the plays that we expect him to make and want him to make and have been looking for him to make. And he made. Uh, Several of those on Saturday night. Ed Carbo was able to catch Kenny not once but twice on the evening. We'll talk about the second one as well. And the Pioneers would punch it in. Josh Jackson would score his first from just down the road, Loudoun County. And the point after by Will Tommy was good. Three plays, 75 yards. Took just 37 seconds. Pioneers trail 21-7. to seven. And that seemed to wake up the defense. Jeremy Eubank, for the first time under some pressure, meets DeAndre Johnson. Great job there by DeAndre. DeAndre's from out in Memphis, Tennessee. And one of our better defensive linemen and uh, just made a great move there on their guard and got in there and got a hold of the quarterback and got him on the ground and uh, hopefully we'll continue to have that success up front. I thought our defensive line did a good job, especially interior, putting a little pressure on their guys and making some things happen. I thought another good job, your wide receivers blocking for the guys to make catches. Kenny Funny, just five yards right there, but you'll see that a little bit later on. But this here's a good drive for the Pioneers. After forcing a stop, getting the punt, Lancaster to Funny for five, Josh Jackson running for five. This is a, dri a drive, I think, for your football team that you needed as we close in on the end of the half. Great throw, great catch. Uh, you know, you, you elaborate a little bit on the blocking of our outside receivers, Evan Altizer and Eric Lynch and... Uh, you know, we've, we've got some guys, Rodnell Cruel, that do a great job blocking for us out there. And here's our true freshman kicker from over in Greenwood, South Carolina, played at Emerald High School. Will Tommy comes in and then drills a field goal there late in the second quarter. To, we, take the, we go into the locker room down 21 to 10, unfortunately, but uh, at least we've had a little success. Nine plays, 42 yards, 252 off the clock. And the first half would end that way. Tuscan would actually get the ball back right there at the end of the first half, had a chance, but uh, Lancaster could not complete any of the three passes that he attempted right around a minute to play in that first half. But the fireworks are just to begin because that's 10 unanswered by Tuscan. The number would continue to rise. We'll talk about that. When we come back with your second half highlights right after this. This is the Frankie DeBus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show. Tusculum versus UVA Wise. The first half that didn't go Tusculum's way for the first couple of series. 139 yards of offense for UVA Wise and 14 points. First two offensive series for the pioneers. 0 for 5 for Luke Lancaster and 0 yards plus 0 points. But they started putting it together right at the end of the first half. Was there a play? Was there a moment? Was there a coaching decision? Was there a player that seemed to turn any momentum? Or is that just the difference from this team this year? No, I actually, you know, I talked to our team in our, in our pregame meal, uh, or actually before we loaded the bus, about you know, playing off of our momentum from last year. Everybody in the room that, that participated uh, understands that there's four quarters in every game. It really doesn't matter what the score is at halftime. We proved that last year and four of the five wins that we had toward the end of the season. and. I guess they, they sort of listened to that in halftime. I talked about uh, we didn't play at all, very good at all in the first quarter. We spotted them some points, played a little bit better in the second quarter, but still lost that quarter. And uh, told our kids we're going to win the third quarter, we're going to win the fourth quarter, and we're going to win the football game. And uh, we just went out there, some good things started happening. And uh, I guess they. So 
sort of thought I might know when I was talking about it. I don't always agree to that, but it sort of fell into our lap, and we end up making some tremendous plays in the third quarter. It was one of the most exciting quarters of football I've been around a long time here at Tusculum, and a lot of guys stepped up that made and made plays that we need to make plays all year. I'm very proud of how they responded. Everybody asked me after the game that I've seen since then, what was the halftime speech like? And I said, to be honest, I don't think there was that for this team. Well, I judge for yourself as we take a look at your second half highlights. We start the second half with the Pioneers trailing by a score of 21 to 10. They receive the second half kickoff, have it first and 10 from their own 35, and you start out with a, a quick little run uh, for no gain, and then Luke Lancaster thought this was just a brilliant play. This is a great play. It's actually a great call. Our whole staff was trying to figure out when was the right time to make this call. Luke makes a great throw, and Evan Altizer, their sophomore from over in North Carolina, makes a great decision to, run, to outrun him. Evan can run. He's, he's very athletic, and I uh, was very excited for him. His mother came up to me after the game and introduced herself. Actually, she went to school with my wife, believe it or not. It's a small world, but uh, went to high school at Tennessee High. But uh, just happy for Evan. Great throw and catch there. and Excellent job of making some things happen. And then the defense really starts to pick up things as well. Griffith for two, a loss of two. Eubank then really under some pressure from the defensive side, Zach Lane and Bundley. Uh, that, that touchdown sort of gave us a huge boost there, some things that needed to happen. And, here comes Emmanuel Bumbley. He's also a great kid. His mother was out there looking for him after the game. He was just as excited as she could be. And uh, Emmanuel found a home there at defensive end and excited about what he brings to the table. Pioneers would take over after a punt from their own 39-yard line. Luke Lancaster didn't get a whole lot on it, but Evan Altizer jumps up and bails him out. I think this play may be the one really that just sort of turned the tide because we had had some un unfortunate things happen. and. That particular play there probably should have been an interception. They had us double covered. Instead, Evan went up and made just a great catch. Luke did not throw a very good ball, and we get down inside the 10-yard line, and, and, and we flip it out there, and I think that's Kenny Funny. that It looks like he did something great, but I think it was either Eric Lynch or Rodney O'Cruel over there that made a phenomenal block for him to get in the end zone. It was Eric Lynch. It was Kenny Funny who got in five plays, 61 yards, 202 off the clock. Here's a problem for UVA-wise. Jeremy Eubank is sacked by D.J. King, lost his helmet, has to come out. Daniel Lewis enters the game and throws to the wrong guy. I'm glad he did. Great job here by Cam. and Cam Thomas, one of our best defensive backs. I'd say those guys played phenomenal. Addison Williams, our defensive back coach, just does a great job coaching those guys up. And Cam there makes a big play. They brought a quarterback in there. They tried to do something a little special, and we were there when we needed to be. Lancaster comes in, calmly throws and finds. Justin Houston didn't take him very long to go to that guy, nine yards. And they continue the drive, continuing to march into uh, towards the goal line. And here, Jordan Barnes comes up with his first catch for 19 yards. Great throw and catch there. Jordan Barnes, a young man that, that needed to have some success and, and does. And here we flip it out there to... To uh, Justin Houston, I think that's actually, uh, who is that? That's Houston. Making and then Barnes. Block. Barnes, again, making a big block to frame into the end zone. So those outside wide receivers allowing the inside receivers to make some plays. And then Martez Tompkins. Big uh, time. Yeah, just <laughs> jumping the route. Big time play. Gets coached up by Addison to do that. And Martez sitting over there and uh, just made a big time interception. I thought he was going to score. I don't know how he didn't, but obviously looking at it on film, they Sort of had to angle on him, but man, what a great play for Martez. A pioneer team that had uh, around 550 yards of offense. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but they had the short field, a one play, two yard drive. Josh Jackson for his second touchdown of the game. And oh, the third quarter fireworks were not quite over just yet, even though the Pioneers have scored 37 unanswered. It would go and uh, to the next drive for Wise, Javotny Latney would be hit, dislodged the ball, and the Pioneers' Malik Brewer would come up with the recovery. Big perm. Malik Brewer is from Boyd Buchanan High School down there in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and call him the preacher man around here. He's a great young man. I was happy for him to get on that fumble and have some success. Now, Tusculum would not score after that turnover, and they would be forced to punt. UVA Wise would get the ball. They would be forced to punt as well. And the Tusculum Pioneers would start the fourth quarter, leading the game by a score of 37-21. to 21. They would start deep in their own territory, as you saw, from the seven. This is the part of the game I enjoy. Josh Jackson for t uh, two carries, and then you kick it outside to Kenny Funny, who goes 64 yards, caught, uh, not going to be caught this time, to the end zone, but got those outside receivers to block for him. I don't know if you noticed, but Evan Altizer gave exceptional effort there, getting downfield, making a big block to free him. And we go back to Kenny on the next series, and here he takes off, and looks like he's going to be gone once again. And he just sort of misses the stiff arm there, but he gets inside the five. and. 
Talking about big time players making big time plays and big time games, and Kenny stepped up for us on Saturday and did exactly what we needed him to do. Yeah, one point forty four unanswered by the Pioneers. Wise would score a touchdown. They would get the ball back, and that's where the Kenny funny uh, catch and run happened. Then Jeremy Eubank throws it to Martez Tompkins once again. Thought really Martez may score on this play. I thought he was going to as well. Second interception of the day. And he's got to trust his speed there and <clears throat> keep running. He looks like he ran out of juice. That monkey might have jumped on his back, but. We did a great job finishing out the ball game, finding a way to win, and just happy for our football team to, to start the season 1-0. You know, we joke about it a lot when we were up in the booth on the radio broadcast and when the Pioneers got down, whether it's been the last couple of years or not. That 16-point deficit that was overcome by that conference championship year in 2003, the Ricardo Coakley game, as we call it, the Lenore Ryan Bears were leading Tusculum 23-7. to 16-point deficit was erased because Ricardo not only made an interception, but he also came up with a fourth down stop on, I think, a naked bootleg, uh, just making a play. Probably was in the wrong position at that particular <laughs> <Probably> time. <was. laughs> this is going to overcome. It was 21 to nothing. You score 44 unanswered. You win the game 47 to 28. Uh, Wise has a great facility. They look like they had a wonderful football program. They've been down on some hard luck. They looked as if they had a good game plan. You just turned it around. This is, I don't think, a team over the last two or three years that could have done something like this team did last night, despite the fact they're an extremely young offense. Altizer with his first catch. Lancaster throws his first pass. Jackson, DJ, coming up with their very first ca uh, carries. You've got um, Jordan Barnes who comes up with his first catch. Um, several guys on this team had a lot of firsts on Saturday. Uh, you know, our, the continuity of our football team, and we had a helmet dedication, which is where the kids get up and put their hand on the helmet and commit or dedicate themselves to the football team in front of the whole team and uh, the, every one of the players that got up there and they were just the seniors and the, and the juniors and a handful of sophomores but they all talked about how we believe in each other we love each other there's a there's a different uh, feeling amongst our kids right now and you know between the white lines on the practice field we're getting after each other but when we leave the field there's a very close knit group and I think when you when you get behind and you have to dig a little deeper and you find out that that may be the case we we do have a unique bunch of, of young men. Uh, we may win the rest of them. We may not win another one. Our goal right now is to be 2-0, and o, but this is, a, this is definitely a unique gr group, and I'm excited to coach them, and hopefully we can, we can keep it going. At the Pioneers, largest come from behind win in the bus era now of 21 points. It's also his 93rd win of his career at Tusculum College. Well, I have some more comments from the coach. We'll talk about what's going on with the home opener. Plus, we will talk about our players of the game. That's when we return right after this. Big season opener. A little bit of a downer because uh, Grandpa Joe celebrated his 95th birthday at UVA Wise. Singing away with the marching band was a little disappointed in that second half. But it's all good game. Tusculum wins at 47 to 28. Back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show after this. You are Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show. The Tusculum Pioneers knock off UVA Wise, an old TVAC rival from a long time ago, and the first Division II year, full member year for UVA Wise. Don't tell their facilities that. They are full-fledged Division I facilities up there in the mountains in Wise, Virginia. But the Pioneers win it by a final score, 47 to 28. One point scoring, 44 unanswered to take that advantage after trailing 21 to nothing in the football game. Time to talk about some of the guys who were responsible for the big comeback and the largest in the Frankie DeBusk era. Let's take a look at our Offensive Player of the Week. Not only did he establish the Offensive Player of the Game at numbers, but Kenny Funny, the senior from Georgetown, South Carolina, out of Andrews High School, established a single game record. Ten catches for 232 yards and two touchdowns with a long of 72. Previously, Kenny's long of the, or it's just most yards received in a game was 120 that came last year against Catawba. Most catches he had in the game had been six. Yeah, he was a weapon and he was a target this past Saturday. He breaks Xambion Smith's record that he established against West Georgia when he caught 219 yards in a game. Now 232 yards, the mark 
by a receiver, the best in any game. A long of 72, also the best for Kenny Funny, previously 64. The defensive player of the game is Martez Tompkins, the young sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia, out of Booker T High School, at Booker T Washington High School. A career best, 10 tackles, including two interceptions in the contest, and definitely for the first, probably sealed the win for the Tuscaloosa Pioneers. And our special team player of the game is Will Tommy, the freshman out of Greenwood, South Carolina, out of Emerald High School. Did have a point after block, but of the nine kickoffs, eight of them sailing in to the end zone and really forcing the opposition to use the full length of the field, plus two for two on field goals. It was a game, especially in the second half, that had plenty of calls. But we'll go to a call that had meaning for the rest of the game. When was that moment in the contest that you felt they've done it? they've won the game. Yeah, it came on the Martez Tompkins interception. Second and 10 at the 25, Eubank trying that quick hitter. Martez Tompkins steps in front of it at the 20, 15 to the 10, at the five to the pylon, out of bounds at the one. It's time to take a look at your post-game wrap-up. Let's go inside the numbers as the Tusculum Pioneers win the big number on the scoreboard, 47 to 28. Wise had more first downs, 25 to 21, but and rushing yards, 133 to 71. But how about the day for Luke Lancaster in his very first career start in his very first collegiate football game? 40, make that 25 of 44, four touchdowns and interception, completing 57% of his passes along of 72 and had a 173.3 pass efficiency rating. I'd say that's not a bad day for a young man who's never taken a collegiate varsity snap. The Pioneers had 548 yards of total offense. Now Eubank didn't have a bad day either for UVA Wise. He was 34 of 52. He was picked off a couple of times, had three interceptions overall, but also threw three touchdowns. He threw for 344. They, UVA Wise, had 477 yards of total offense. Not a bad day for Hunter Cantrell, 38.3 yard average punting wise, 41 yard average for Trent Martin of UVA Wise. Time of possession, UVA Wise 35-16, Tusculum 25-44. Struggled on third downs, Tusculum 4 of 13, UVA Wise 11 of 23 in the game. That is your post-game wrap-up. Coach DeBusk and I will come back and we'll wrap it as we get set for game number two next week against Virginia State. Pioneers win at 47 to 28. Back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show. Tusculum defeats UVA Wise by a final score of 47 to 28 in the ninth meeting between the schools. Clint, or when they were Clinch Valley, had that 5 to 3 lead. Now, since the first time they were UVA Wise, 5 4 UVA Wise leading the series. They'll meet again next year at Tusculum. Team that we'll get a chance to see for the very first time as well is Virginia State. I saw those guys um, a few years ago. I was at Carson Newman when they played him then. Was very impressed at that time with the athletic ability and I'm sure not much has changed with that program. A scary, scary football team. Uh, they lost uh, last Saturday to California, Pennsylvania, but the, you know, Cal PA is generally a, a playoff team. It doesn't, you know, they're, they're a really good Division II football team. Uh, and Virginia State, uh, I think they lost 35-16, to 16, but Scary football team, lots of athletic ability. You know, they, they won 11 or 12 ball games last year, went to the second round of the playoffs. Uh, they did lose their coaching staff. They have mm -hmm. lost some players, but they're still incredibly talented. Uh, we'll get all we want, I can promise you that. Uh, you know, Brian, our, our kids will be excited. You know, it'll be the home opener. A lot of good things going on here at Tuscan College, but we have got to play four quarters of football again if we expect to find a way to win. All right, one thing that we've kind of missed out on, I haven't really talked about, most people make their most improvement from game one to game two. I'll probably talk about where you don't need to make improvement. How about Will Tommy? Um, you know, what did he do on special teams for your team? 
Well, Addison Williams found him and signed him from Greenwood, South Carolina, and our staff high fives him every time we do kickoff or every time we do extra point and field goal at practice. Will's just uh, does an unbelievable job. He's a weapon. I mean, you know, we we kicked it. Uh, we kicked off last week against Wise nine times, and seven of them were touchbacks. So you put a team on the 25-yard line. And they got to go 75 yards to score. Seven of the nine times you kick it to them, the favor is Tusculum College. Mm -hmm. and, and Will just is, uh, he had an incredible game one, uh, does a great job kicking off, made a big field goal. I don't know, he's, he's, he's truly a, an exceptional football player. Just looks like he weighs about 140 pounds, very low key, very soft voice. And uh, I can tell you one thing, I'm glad he's a Tusculum College pioneer. Well, eight balls went into the end zone. But they decided to return one because they were so bored back there for a kicking staff. So if that's the best, where do you need to see that improvement as you head into this game? Well, I think, Brian, we, we, we played pretty good, you know, and for two quarters of that football game, maybe two and a half. Uh, we sure can't start off as slow as we did against uh, Virginia State if we expect to have the same success. And, uh, you know, so we had some alignment issues with our defense. We had some, some uh, route running issues offensively, and we turned some guys loose on the offensive line. You know, things that I guess you do in, in game from in game one. Hopefully, we can minimize some of those, and maybe Luke won't start off, uh, you know, 0 for 2 or 0 for 5, as you stated there, and no yards in the first quarter. Maybe we can adjust those things. Uh, and we do have to, to iron out some special teams issues. I watched a lot of our special teams after game one. It's always a concern of mine, making sure we stay on top of that. And, uh, you know, the, the biggest goal that we, we had, the only goal we had, was to be 1 and 0. Now we have to make improvements. We have to we have, we have to have a great week of practice. We have to try to be two and zero, and we're playing a much more talented football team, and we cannot afford to make those same mistakes. No question, it will be an emotional day for the Pioneers in the home openers. They welcome in Virginia State for the first time here to Pioneer Field. You can join us for the coverage. It will be an early afternoon start on a Saturday with kickoff at 1 o'clock from Pioneer Field. You can always check out the game online through TouchGillumPioneers.com with the live video stream and also an audio feed, plus on the Pioneer Sports Network, which is AM 1450 WSMG here in Greenville, or worldwide through TouchGillumPioneers.com, fed through Red Zone Media. For all of those involved with the Frankie DeBus Show, we hope that you'll tune in again next week. Many thanks to Luke Manning for our coverage, for Nathan Humbert, for Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk. I'm Brian Staten, and until next week, game on, Pioneer Nation. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk, featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity.